University of the South Pacific and University 98 studies. He then goes. Ladies and gentlemen, this workshop is quite timely, timely as we are uh, also approaching the uh, uh, approaching Friday, which is the National Sports and Wellness Day. I do recall when we were um, when the paper came to cabinet about dedicating the day uh, for uh, the paper came as a National Sports Day, and we had asked the question: What was the intention of dedicating the day? Is it to uh, uh, demonstrate Fiji's um, importance of sports in Fiji? Or is it to demonstrate importance of sports and wellness and well-being? That is why the title of the day is National Sports and uh, Wellness Day. And there was, there was a change. So that's why the title, it's not a sports day, remember. The intention is twofold. Of course, to give um, that level of provenance to sports, but also the intention is about promoting our wellness, our physical state. Ladies and gentlemen, as Rudu Fiji is renowned for its sporting prowess, Globally, a small country like Fiji, uh, coming out as a leader in a particular sport, uh, is a major achievement. We have stamped our mark in a number of sports played across the globe. We have continuously benched, pressed above our weight and showed the world that sports culture is embedded across all communities in our island nation. Sports is one of the basic necessities of every Fijian and the love for it is immense. The other day I was at uh, Colombo Secondary School and I met the teachers and I asked why is it that students from here um, wanting to go to Rishiko College? And uh, if you look at the infrastructure, very good. Colombo, those who have been or seen Colombo High School. And the teachers, young, bright ones, all of them are from the same university where teachers are going to Rishikul. And then one of the teachers said, uh, or I think the VP or AP or principal said, uh, said, we don't have a sports ground, a rugby ground. We don't offer rugby. So you can see the level of difference it's making uh, in terms of um, students' choice of a school. And I said, we will have it by January next year. Ladies and gentlemen, the mission of the Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts is to provide a holistic and empowering education system that will enable all children to realize and fully participate and appreciate the inheritance and potential, all of which will contribute to a peaceful and sustainable national development. This notion of nation building, this notion about holistic development of a child should trickle down to every educator in our country. Our education system is about holistic development of our children. Going out of those days when we were in the school system, all we were thinking about is completing our primary school, high school, going to university, getting a qualification. That thing is changing now and we, all of us should think broadly about nation building and the kind of citizens we'll produce out of our school system. If everyone, if everyone starts thinking that the children we have at this stage from primary to high school, all we need to understand is that whatever we say, whatever we show them, whatever we tell them, they will take it as gospel truth. Because that is, they are at that particular stage. And secondly, we need to understand that we are defining the future. They will run with it. And therefore, the kind of future Fiji we have, whether they are obese, obese whether they are um, uncouth, whether they are a low-abiding citizen, whether they are um, 
responsible citizens of the society, whether they have good understanding about different religions, different cultures, whether they respect elderly, how successful they are, they are, all of them will be defined by particularly this period from years 5 to 18 when they are in our ECE to high school. That stage of life is the defining stage for the child. 90%. The rest, I think beyond that age, is very difficult to really change their mind. And that is the level of importance we play our teachers through the education system in defining future Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, this holistic approach to education does not allot academia an isolated or elevated importance, but it is strongly and appropriately parallel with curriculum perspectives and a range of extracurricular activities. This is well aligned to the philosophy of education in Fiji, which places the child at the center of learning and contributes to the development of the child spiritually, intellectually, culturally, socially, emotionally, aesthetically, and physically. So this is it. We, whatever we do, I always say that have the child as a center. The end of the day is the child. At the end of the day, it's for the child. At the end of the day, it will define the child's future. And we're talking about, we're talking about a holistic development, is cultural development, spiritual development, intellectually, the academic side, socially, emotional, aesthetically, and physical development. These are the pillars of a child's growth and development that we, if, I, if I were to ask that really, our completion, upon completion of year 18, I mean, has the learning outcomes been achieved? Has the learning outcomes been achieved? I will take this, decompose it, identify the attributes in each of these, and then use whatever tools, whether it's in class exam, whether it's out on the field, whether it's a setting in the society, whether it's an in-depth interview, access to attributes, and then say whether in each of these components the learning outcome has been delivered. So this is something that still our teachers are grappling to accept, that what matters is the delivery of the learning outcome. Some of our teachers, they're still, still thinking about the input-based approach of coming at eight, going and teaching in the classroom, fulfilling the timetable that has been given to him or her. That's all. Still that notion about that stock of knowledge, the change in behavior from January to December, has it taken place? If not, then the exercise of educating the child over that period of 14, 14, 13 weeks has been, is futile. Ladies and gentlemen, um, on physical education and training, it supports healthy living of our children. Regular exercise not only trains the body to be fit, but also trains the mind to be stress-free. Our children all all over the world are falling prey to junk food and poor eating and lifestyle habits which are affecting their growth and development. You all, most of you have children, some of you have grandchildren, and you compare your days and the current era, the current era of remote control, fast foods, is keeping our children away from the playground. How do you, how do we change or inculcate that culture of wanting, of wanting to get out onto the field and undertake physical training and exercise? 
Exercise and physical training has been always promoted also as a solution to fight NCDs. When we have physical education and training programs in schools, there is no doubt students' health will be enhanced further and healthier lifestyles will be adapted. So, second to the parents, teachers become the, the guru of the child. And given that we have the child, most of the active hours of the day, of the 24 hours in a day, the active hours are 7 to, let's say, 10 p.m. Out of the 7 to 10 p.m., most of the active hours are with, uh, they are with us. And how do the real challenges that make the most of the active hours to ensure that we deliver the child um, out of our school system the way we want them to be or the way the society wants them, the way that the, our Honorable Prime Minister, our government has a vision for them. Even the World Health Organization in its global recommendation of physical activity for health concluded that in a quote, in order to realize both physical and mental health benefits, young persons aged 5 to 17 years should accumulate at least 60 minutes of medium to vigorous intensity physical activity daily. Unquote. UNESCO 2015 uh, report on physical education, guide, uh, education guidelines for policy makers, page 15. So ladies and gentlemen, physical education and training in schools is the stepping stone for more, many sports people who are gracing world fame and glory. The talent and skill and how from famous sports people began through the engagement in physical education program in schools. Through this, many people have made lucrative career choices and brought a lot of joy, glory, and honor to the nation. In our time, sports was seen as a side activity, as a leisure activity, as a luxury activity. But now, in Fiji, sports is an industry. At the national level, we see sports as an industry, no longer as a laser activity. And that's how we should see sports in, um, in our school education system as well. Ladies and gentlemen, physical education implants key values and life skills which form the foundation for the successful future. Attributes such as discipline, responsibility, how to cope with both success and failure, how to evaluate performance against their own and others' previous achievements, fair play, celebrating each other's varying contributions, as well as appreciating the demands and benefits of teamwork, confidence and other positive behavioral patterns related to individual or team sports. This week, we launched the 2017 Drugs and Illicit Trafficking Campaign for all schools. During the launch, and in previous statements that I made, I have reiterated that children should be monitored, supervised, supported and guided to make the right choice, choices so that they can stay away from such harm. I believe, I believe that in, by indulging students in sports is one of the ways to keep their minds focused and disciplined. I've always argued to parents, even at my own home, that if you are able to give some additional activity to the child to be engaged in, then the child will keep away from these kinds of mischief making. Let's say child taking guitar classes or swimming classes or long uh, tennis or trying to quote some of the things that my kids are doing. But it keeps them busy, musical events, musical uh, groups. It keeps them busy. We were at Taylor Day last, uh, last week, and the en entire program there, were, uh, the musical part was done by Taylor students. They have their own band, own band. And the entire musical part of that whole day's program was done by the students' band. 
And the greatest advantage of that was the students would be after home, they go and they play, they, they, they practice. So it keeps them away from engaging in some other, um, or gets swear, keeps them away from being swayed away by others who could take them into something else which could get them into trouble. So ladies and gentlemen, success of a child will never ever come due to sheer luck. It will come due to hard work, sacrifice and self-control. And this is what we need to inculcate amongst our children. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I today I again implore on you to see the contemporary demands of our children the state of the um, health of our, of our country, the, the status of NCDs, and think deeper on how we, or our, our past educators have contributed and what we can do to ensure that this is not the case in future Fiji. I cannot tell you, I deeply believe that if you are able to inculcate a culture of physical fitness amongst our children, you will see physically fit children and therefore mentally fit children graduating out of our school system and contributing to nation building in future Fiji. So, ladies and gentlemen, the nature of future Fiji is in our hands. You are not in a simple position. You, are, you hold a very important position. And you got there, not by sheer luck as well. You've worked hard, you've been recognized, and there is an expectation from you. And the expectation has never been so high as it is now because of the kinds of problems we are seeing and number two, because of the kinds of challenges our children are facing from the rapidly changing market and society. You can see the kinds of advertisements about food appearing in visual media. Kinds of uh, exposure that our children are getting from social media. While there's enormous information out there on the IT platform, but it is not tested, scrutinized. And that is why our children need a lot of support and mentoring and guidance now than what we needed in our days. So, with these words, I want to thank UNESCO um, for assisting us in this very important area. Some may think it is a peripheral area, peripheral to chemistry, biology, or mathematics, English. I don't see it that way, to be honest. I myself, not 100% physical, physically fit, but I do training nearly every day. And I decided myself to avoid giving any excuse like weather or um, security, etc. I have also a small gym set at home while I'm a member of one of the gyms in, in, in town, closer to Parliament House and closer to my office. I'm a paid member and I sneak out anytime I get time in the day. And if I miss, then there's a gym at home. There's no reason that it's raining today. No reason that this is, there's potholes or manholes on the road. No reason that the dogs will be chasing me. There's no reason. So that's the kind of culture, mindset I have now. That I must, otherwise I feel guilty that I'm socializing or maybe taking some drinks, etc. But I didn't do physical exercise today. 
that that's the level of thinking, change in thinking that we need to bring amongst our children. And it's not too difficult. Because you are already accepted and the teachers are already accepted as their guru, as the, um, someone who is always will be telling them the truth and the correct information. I wish you all the best and I have a pleasure to open this workshop. Thank you, Naka.